Happy holidays. I hope you're enjoying this season with family, friends, or loved ones. Not everybody enjoys this time of year. The holidays for some is full of stress, anxiety, depression, and even suicidal ideations. In this episode of the Latino Business Report, our guest is Laura Ramirez, a licensed psychotherapist practicing in Houston, Texas. Laura gives listeners tips and methods of how to cope with feelings of anxiety and depression. Equally important, she tells us what to watch for and what to do when dealing with somebody experiencing anxiety or depression. Welcome to the Latino Business Report. This podcast covers business, people, and issues of the day from a Latino perspective. The Latino Business Report is brought to you by TAMAC, the Texas Association of Mexican-American Chambers of Commerce. TAMAC is the leading Hispanic business organization in Texas since 1975. Now for your host, J.R. Gonzalez. And welcome back to another episode. It is the holiday season, ladies and gentlemen. With that holiday season, people are excited, they're running around, but there are also a lot of issues that go along with the holidays, and that's kind of depression and a little bit of anxiety. And to talk about that today, we have Laura Ramirez. Laura, how are you? And welcome back. Hi, JR. Thank you for having me back on the show. No, no, it's a pleasure. Thank you for for making the time out of that. Now, as introduced a little bit earlier, that you are a Texas licensed professional counselor, and we're here to talk about some of the stuff that a lot of people face during the holiday season, but either don't want to admit it or don't recognize what it is. And that's going to be some anxiety and depression. Exactly. So, those, I'm sorry, those are the hmm. Those are the two uh, issues that I tend to see a lot uh, with my clients, anxiety, depression. And the reason they're so prevalent is because those two uh, diagnoses can actually be a trigger or lead into something that we term suicidal ideation. Oh, wow. Well, I know there's a lot of subjects to cover. There's a lot to cover in that. Let's start with anxiety. Now, now people are anxious. Why do people get anxious and what triggers some of this anxiety? Okay, well, uh, anything can trigger anxiety, even technical difficulties, or even like changing your notes up a little bit, but it's okay, we'll talk about anxiety. (laughs) So anxiety, it's normal. I mean, it's a normal part part of life, you can become anxious about anything. I mean, money, health, family problems, anything can cause anxiety, including public speaking, if you think about it. Uh, So anything can cause that this so there are different um, Anxiety, according to the National Institute of Mental Health, anxiety disorders involve more than temporary fears. So Mm -hmm. that's how you look at it when you're diagnosing someone. It has to last more than temporary fears. Right. It would be uh, longer periods of time that you're struggling with anxiety, that someone would be diagnosed as having anxiety, such as generalized anxiety disorders or panic disorders. Okay, so somebody is anxiety, like preparing for this podcast. (laughs) We won't tell the audience about your microphone and headphone issues on your end, and I can tell you're getting a little anxious. But that that that's a form of anxiety that can manifest itself by something simple. But a a diagnosed anxiety, how long, at what level does an individual have to reach to be diagnosed as being having a disorder? Well, uh, you know that that's a different. That usually, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about depression. Uh, I'm going to go back to this, but usually it's longer periods of time. For example, depression. Depression, you would have to exhibit symptoms of depression for two weeks or longer. So I'm going to say anxiety would be the same because honestly, like you just said, anxiety can be caused by anything. Even, you know, changing the order of things uh, causes anxiety. So, or just, you know, not being able to hook up my mic to the headphones caused me some anxiety, but it's over. So therefore I would not be a person that would be diagnosed with anxiety based on this one episode. However, if they well, watching longer. you watching uh-huh. you trying to hook up your mic may have made you anxious. It kind of depressed me on this end going, <laughs> okay. And that's you're, temporary. You're, See, it's over. <laughs> like <laughs> we're done, right? Like, I haven't are gotten you over it up? yet. I haven't gotten over it yet. <laughs> okay. So by the end of the podcast, I'm hope you're over okay. All right. the depression that I have caused you due to my anxiety of hooking up my microphone. But yes, that's a perfect example, JR. 
things like that, little things that come up in our everyday life, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, we have a, a problem with our car, you know, our car won't start or, or, or one of our tires has less air than the other. That causes me anxiety when one of my tires has lower pressure than the other. It's not a big deal, but it causes me momentary anxiety. Those are just life concerns. So any, any number of things can trigger anxiety. Exactly. Anything, it, anything it's, it's can as trigger unique anxiety. As, am I, if I'm understanding you correctly, what would trigger anxiety in an individual can be as unique as the individual themselves. Because some people, something will trigger them where the next person say, no big deal. I'm not even worried about it. Exactly. So what may be a big deal to me that causes me anxiety, like getting on this podcast, you're a pro at it. It doesn't cause you any type of anxiety to come on a podcast and, and just, you know, talk about certain content. So it, it makes a difference in the person. It's unique to that specific person. The difference in anxiety is, like you said, they're life little factors. Diagnosing anxiety in a client is long term. You know, the symptoms have to be prevalent for longer periods of time than a couple of hours or a day or two. So do you want me to share some of the symptoms that cause anxiety? Sure. And, well, before, before we get into that, let me, let me ask you a question. Uh -huh. as, um, as a person has anxiety and there's multiple things, to be diagnosed, to be diagnosed, does it have to be the same thing that triggers the anxiety or can a person just have multiple levels in, of anxiety be anxious about almost anything and everything? So the way we diagnose anxiety or depression or any type of mental uh, health concern, it's diagnosed in what is called the DSM-5, which is okay. the diagnostical manual. And I don't remember what it's called, but it's called DSM-5. I see it all the time. It's a big purple okay. book. Uh, it's pretty much a checklist that we go through. And every mental health diagnosis has different uh, factors. So sometimes they're, they would have to be presenting with at least one to three factors. Some have to present six out of 10. So it just depends on the particular mental health concern. But for anxiety, there's just symptoms and they have to be sure. present for a certain amount of time in order to be diagnosed. So example, for example, one of the most commonly diagnosed anxieties is generalized anxiety disorder. Those are just, uh, you know, different symptoms that present themselves as anxiety. There's also panic disorders. Whenever you hear somebody say, I've experienced a panic attack, I ended up in the hospital. Those are usually brought on by the symptoms of anxiety, but they're prolonged and they also take more of a physical um, manifestation, which is shortness of breath. You may feel like you're experiencing a heart attack. Um, so that's a different kind of, of diagnosis for anxiety. The other anxiety is social anxiety disorder, and that's being seen more now because, you know, during the COVID lockdown, everybody was in their home. They didn't really interact. And now that we're opening up things more, people are becoming more social, getting out there, uh, meeting people. You see more of this social anxiety as a diagnosis because now, people don't know how to me, me, get out there. Let me uh -huh. ask you, that. yeah, I can see that in social anxiety, but mm -hmm. it's part of the anxiety not only socializing with people again, but maybe caused by maybe a fear of being exposed to COVID since there's been a lockdown and since it's not over and it's the winter months and it's starting to surge up again. So could that be a part of it as well? Probably not a social anxiety. Uh, it could, I mean, it could, it okay. could kind of, you know, uh, take on both roles. It could be more of a generalized anxiety disorder, which is in general, you just have an anxiety. Uh, but also, it could be a social anxiety phobia too, because but it depends on the way it's it's presented. Am I am I going to have anxiety because I'm going to be out in a social setting and I may get COVID? Possibly. But do I just have a fear or an anxiety that I will get COVID or any or flu or RSV or anything that's going on right now? Um, that could be seen as more of just a generalized anxiety disorder. Now, if it becomes where it's habitual and you habitually turn down uh, invitations to go someplace uh, because you're afraid of germs, okay. then that becomes a phobia. Okay. And there's all kinds of phobias. And, I mean, and that and that's not on our list of things to talk to today. <laughs> we'll say phobias for another. We'll just episode. leave it under the under the umbrella. Okay. Yeah, that could be a totally different podcast, but we'll leave it under the umbrella of anxiety. So phobias are under the umbrella of anxiety. Okay. So 
do you want me to share some of the symptoms of yeah, anxiety? Yeah, please, please do. Please do. Okay. So some of the symptoms that people may experience are uh, they may become restless, wound up, or on edge. So a lot of times you think, oh, they're just having, you know, they're having a bad day. They're just very edgy today. It could potentially be a symptom of anxiety, depending on what's going on in that person's head. Um, they can become easily fatigued. Think about it. When you're worried or stressed and it's constant, your body feels it. So you become tired. You may be like, I just need, you know what? I just need to go take a nap. I'm just exhausted. Uh, difficulty, you know, just difficulty with um, irritability, as we mentioned before. So just having that um, feeling that you just can't shake this. You can't shake being upset at someone or you don't know why you're upset. You just are. Uh, also, physical uh, manifestations of anxiety are having headaches, muscle aches, stomach aches. That's huge. Uh, a lot of times we don't think about the headaches or the muscle aches, but stomach aches is big with anxiety because that's where, you know, the root of it is. It's like, oh, you know what? My stomach's just bothering me. And a lot of times that can be anxiety uh, or just unexplained pain can manifest hmm. itself that way. And uh, then wait, unexplained pain or yeah, physical like you, pain. Yeah. Just have some type of physical pain. You're like, you know what? I just, I have feel this something in my chest. I just don't know what it is, you know, some heaviness. And then you start thinking, oh, great. Now I'm having heart concerns, but really the unexplained pain is just the heaviness of the anxiety that you're experiencing. So it's unexplained. You go to the doctor and they say, you know what? You're fine. Your heart's fine. It could just be a manifestation of the anxiety. Okay, uh, of course, could, always go get that checked out because you don't want to leave right, that unchecked. Right. You don't want to just blow it off, say it's anxiety, right. and end up in the morgue. Let me. Did I hear you all correctly? You said that a person's attitude towards another person may be caused by anxiety. Oh, definitely. You know, uh, and we see that a lot in in stores. You know, you go to the store, you go to Walmart, H E B. There's lots of people around, and people are just irritable. They're standing in line and they're huffing and puffing because somebody's taking too long to check out. You know, that's irritability. They're anxious because they may have to be somewhere or they're anxious because they're thinking about where they have to go next, or it could be anxiety because of their finances. I mean, it could be a number of things, but it can also show up as irritability towards others or just irritability in general. Um, so one of, would it be, would it be safe to say when my other half is mad at me and I go, what did I do? And she goes, nothing that She's suffering just, from anxiety and it's really her you. problem and not mine. You know what, JR, it's probably just you. You probably it, did something to her and <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it could be, it could just be irritability because we all struggle with anxiety, whether it's work anxiety, you okay. know, there may be a, a project at work that's causing us anxiety. So by suffering it's from that stress. anxiety actually, actually can affect their behavior towards other people. Oh, definitely. It's a right. huge factor towards other people and how we react towards others, you know. So that person didn't um, necessarily have to do anything to wrong them or upset them. They just came in. These factors are, and I'm not trying to justify my you're own You're trying life, to you get know? yourself I'm, out of something. I know no, that's no, what no, you're no, doing. No, 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 no. <laughs> but, 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 but seriously, so so uh, a coworker, it comes in, they're in, in a bad mood. They're, you feel like they've done something, you, you've wronged them, they're upset at you. But it could just be caused by anxiety on their end of issues you're not even aware of. Think about this. A coworker comes in in the morning. You don't know the number of problems they've had. You don't know if, you know, maybe they didn't get any sleep because their children were up at night with a fever. Um, you don't know if maybe in the morning they their dog made a mess and they had to clean it up and they had to rush. You don't know if they were drinking their coffee and it spilled all over their shirt. So they had to rush back in and get another shirt. All those little things can cause anxiety. And why, by the time they show up to the office and they're irritable, it's a, you know, one thing after another, like a domino effect. It's just like, what else can go wrong? You know, and, okay. and that can cause situational short-term anxiety. If a person stays in that anxiety, that cycle of anxiety or that episode of anxiety, then that's when it becomes clinical anxiety. If you stay in there too long, as we mentioned before, two weeks or longer. Or now, it's cyclical. Okay. Um, and, and I interrupt you. Is there any other symptoms that, that yes. on the list here? Let's, let's get through so that. So another one is um, difficulty controlling feelings or worry. Think about that. How many times do we sit and worry about something and it hasn't happened yet? That's anxiety. Uh, also sleep problems. Anxiety manifests itself in sleep problems. They may A person may have trouble falling asleep because they have so much on their mind. And a lot of times we attribute that to stress. 
stress is not bad. Stress can cause us to move forward, do things, um, you know, prompt us to, to stay on target on top of our goals. But, but there's a definite difference between stress and anxiety. Definitely. So stress, stress can, can cause anxiety. Oh yeah. Prolonged periods of stress or, um, it can manifest itself as anxiety depending on how that person takes it. Okay. You know, stress can also but, be a, another, stress is a whole different podcast too, because that can okay. cause a so, lot but, of physical but, but ailments. Stress too. doesn't fall under the anxiety umbrella, if you will. Stress can perpetuate anxiety. Stress can also okay. perpetuate depression. So it's stress. Stress is like a, a catalyst for many things. All right. Um, but tro- if they have, if someone has problems falling asleep or staying asleep, think about it. You're asleep. All of a sudden, at two o'clock in the morning, you wake up and you're like, you're like starting to do a to do list in your head because you're anxious about maybe a project that you're working on at work, or you wake up thinking about, you know, that medical report that hasn't been delivered to you yet. All those things can cause anxiety and it can affect your sleeping. Okay. All right. So, Interesting. So different things about anxiety. Now, how does anxiety, I mean, we're in the holiday season right now. Mm-hmm. Do you see a rise in, in people being anxious about, about the holidays? Definitely. I mean, even right now, it's a couple of days before Christmas. There's a freeze that's headed, you know, towards our, our sunny state, right? Um, there's a lot of anxiety. People are anxious going to the grocery store right now, trying to gear up for this, this weather, this, uh, freeze that's happening. You know, they're, it's just like a hurricane. And so any yeah. type of weather concern can cause anxiety. The holidays causes anxiety. I just, uh, did a whole webinar on how to deal with difficult family members during the holidays, dealing with difficult family members or the anticipation of dealing with them can cause anxiety. So that's what anxiety is. Anxiety is, So let me just give you a little short clarification of depression and anxiety, the difference between the two. The way I I tell my clients is depression is thinking about the past that you can't change. It causes you depression. Anxiety is thinking about a future that you have no control of. And that causes anxiety. Uh, The only thing we have is right now is this moment. That's the only thing we can control. We can't control the past, which is depression, and we can't control the future, which is anxiety. So the only thing we can control is what we're doing in the here and now, which is where we, which is what I always tell my clients, operate in the here and now. That's the only thing you can control. Okay. Now, you mentioned that I want to go back to, you said you just did a, mm-hmm. a, a webinar on how to deal with uh, what? Difficult Difficult family members during the holidays. Yes. Okay. Me, I just don't invite them over, but you know, that's me. So would you mind sharing at least one or two of those little tips of how to deal with difficult family members? Yeah. uh, We actually had five points and I'm not going to share all five because then the web, this uh, podcast is probably going to go way too long. But one of my favorites uh, of how to deal with difficult family members is just setting your boundaries, you know, knowing what you value and knowing what you will be willing to accept kind of like a fence in your backyard, you know, the boundaries, people know not to cross over into your yard and, you know, do things in your yard past your fence. But one of the important things about boundaries is that they have to be flexible based on your relationship with your different relationships with different people. So people always in their mind set a boundary as far as like a wooden fence or an electric fence, you know, something that's going to shock somebody and kill them. But we need to stop setting boundaries that are harsh and that are rigid. What I always say is set a boundary, much like, you know, those big trampolines that people put in their backyards, Mm -hmm. the safe way to bounce on a trampoline in the backyard is to put a netting around it. You know, you don't want to fall off the trampoline and break your leg or your arm, right? So there's, there's these big nettings that go around the trampoline. That's the way I tell my clients or anybody that I'm talking to, to set their boundaries, make them flexible. You know, boundaries should be there to keep yourself safe and also keep the other person safe. So if you think about the netting around a trampoline, if somebody falls into the netting, it pushes that person back on the trampoline, right? And it also keeps people from just jumping out of nowhere into the trampoline. Those are the kinds of boundaries that we should be setting. Be flexible. We have different relationships with different people. Families different than friends. People that you love the most are different than the people that you want to keep at a distance. So make sure your boundaries are flexible. They're not that electric fence. They're not the wooden fence and make sure they're flexible and that you can give a little and take a little. So that's, that's one of my favorite, uh, 
tips for that. The other thing is have fun, you know, leave any type of negativity, anything that's happened in the past, leave it at the door. You know, life is about fun. We spend so much time in our lives talking about and feeling so uh, resentful. But you know what? What I learned is that when you hold this resentment is or, or unforgiveness is is uh, turns into resentment eventually after you haven't been able to forgive. And one of the things that I heard that was very profound is when you have unforgiveness for someone is two things. They either know they've done something to you and they don't care or they don't know they've done something to you and you're holding it yourself. So you kind of have to choose that, that side. Are you going to just let it go and just enjoy life? Because again, all we have is the here and now we can't live in the past. We can't change the past and we have no control of the future. So all we have is the right now. And the right now is have fun, leave negativity at the door, have positive expectations and just enjoy yourself. And if you find yourself in a spot where you're not enjoying yourself, then there's the door you can leave at any time. So those are a couple of tips we shared. Not all, but some of them. All right. But well, Laura, you are Latina, right? I am Latina. And I know what you're saying. <laughs> our family. How do we deal with our family? That's a Ama, whole other podcast. We, you, need, you, Ama, you need boundaries. Yeah, right. Or, Mom, go out to go out in the backyard and jump on the trampoline. They're not okay, going to listen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we'll I just totally leave that it. at that. We, and I, I, I and get that was addressed saying, too. Yeah. Yeah. It, very, very helpful. Very helpful. But And, and every family is unique. But um, Yes. Very unique. It can be depressing at times and speaking oh, of totally depression yeah. yeah what is the difference now, now depression is another uh, another subject we want to talk about today so talk to us a little bit about the depression and 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 again and i hate to bring it but it's the holidays i know a lot of people really get depressed um during the holidays and that can be caused by any number of reasons but i also know that a lot of people misuse the word depression and so can you give us an idea of what depression really is so according, again, according to the National Institute of Mental Health, uh, depression is a common but serious mood disorder. The symptoms can affect how you feel, think, and handle daily activities, such as sleeping, eating, and working. Again, these uh, symptoms have to last for longer than two weeks. You can feel depressed with anything. You know, I gained a pound. I'm depressed. Uh, I lost only a pound. I'm depressed. That's not, that's not clinical depression. Um, and I do have some demographics here. So just wanted to share that too. Women okay. are two times more likely to develop depression over men. Two times. Okay. Two times more likely. And then about one in 10 people will experience depression during their lifetime. And lastly, most people experience their first depressive episode between the ages of 20 and 30. All right. Now you said 10% will experience depression sometimes in their life. I know people who have depression like every other day. They seem to be depressed about something, one thing or another. So so this is it, clinical depression. This is actually depression. diagnosed, yeah, depression. Um, so yeah, that, that would be the difference is the, the clinical clinical side of it and how it's, it's diagnosed. Now, when we talk about depression and even the anxiety, Mm -hmm. is are both of those mental states or can any of it be caused by by something physical well definitely you know it can be a physical um i mean let's say ailment. you know bad, bad bad health you know heart disease something i mean can of there's some can, can can a physical uh if something's physically wrong with you can it manifest itself into the form of depression or definitely or anxiety? And I'm glad you mentioned food because a lot of what we eat, um, it can, it can change our mood and our energy. So eat healthy. That's one of the, so I have, if you don't mind me sharing, I have five ways to get through depression. And you just talked about one of them is eating better, be eating healthy foods. There are certain foods, uh, based on the chemicals that are in those foods that can cause that low mood, low energy, which in turn cause depression or they perpetuate the symptoms of depression. Also exercising, you know, it's endorphins. Endorphins are real. They cause you to feel happy. Uh, if you're not exercising and you're not doing, you know, anything like taking a brisk walk or anything like yoga, stretching, all of that produces the endorphins. I uh, enjoy running. And so it's called the runner's high because you run, 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 and the endorphins just come out and you're happy. It makes you happy. So, you know, some, those are some of the things, but they can definitely, those are all chemical reactions 
So yeah. all those things could cause depression if you're not participating in those. So just real quick, five ways to help get you through depression. If you are experiencing depression, especially around this time is exercise. And that can mean just take a walk, take a 15 to 30 minute walk every day. Nobody's asking you to go out and run a 5k. Just take a walk, just be outside, you know, breathe. Of course, if the weather permits, the other thing is eat healthy, eat healthier foods, which could bring up your mood and bring up your energy. Also, don't dwell on your problems. You know, problems are problems. They're always going to be there. Figure out ways how you can either solve the problem or just let it go for a little bit and enjoy yourself. Again, all we have is right now. Uh, Express yourself. You know, be creative. A lot of times people like to to draw or paint. Um, Let your creativity flow, whether it's through music, writing music, playing music, any type of creativity that you enjoy doing Uh, when you're creative, whether it's dance or you're composing music that brings up your mood as well. That helps with depression Uh, and And notice good things. That's the last uh, tip for depression. Well, there's lots of tips, but that's one of the bigger ones. Notice good things. Uh, Practice the attitude of gratitude. There's always something to be grateful for. There's always a silver lining in every situation, even in a difficult situation, you can always find the good in something. Okay. Well, those are five good tips. Now I'm looking at the tip list here. I can probably do three out of the five. That thing about exercise and eating healthy, eh, I'm not sure about. So can I substitute eating healthy with maybe just drinking more alcohol? I mean, that seems to work for me with a little no, bit. No, don't do That's a big no, no. That is a, a not a good coping skill. Alcohol is a natural depressive. You don't want to add to more depression. So, I mean, if you want to have a glass of wine or a beer, that's fine. Just don't use it as a coping mechanism. So please, Jared, don't do that. In fact, choose another thing on that list. You said you could do, what, three out of the five? Yeah. So choose I mean, the other ones that you can do. Well, you know what? I'll just try to think positive about you and these tips, okay? All right. That, that sounds like a plan. <laughs> well, Lada, I know that we've, we've, we've covered um, quite a bit, and, and it's there's there's a lot there's a lot to this, but during the holiday season, I just want people not only to enjoy themselves. I know you have to deal with a lot of anxiety and there's depression out there, but you know, we got a new year around the corner. So um, any closing comments or anything you'd like to talk about, about depression or anxiety um, before we end this? I would like to, I would just like to share that uh, there's a new number. It's the 988 number. You can call uh, or text 988. Uh, It's a support line for anyone who is experiencing anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation. So make sure people utilize that. Uh, It used to, there's a 1-800 number where for suicidal ideation, if you're experiencing those symptoms, but one of the big things is that look around you, you know, as you're out, you know, meeting people, seeing people, uh, seeing your family, Try to look for those symptoms in people because a lot of times we don't recognize them. We as humans do a good job of masking any type of clinical anxiety or depression. So just some tips to be able to support someone who is experiencing depression or anxiety is recognize it. Again, be aware of who you're interacting with. Uh, You could be that person that they need in order to help them come out of that. So okay. just be there to listen, uh, make it a point to reach out. If you know someone that in the past has dealt with depression or anxiety or anybody who's lost a loved one uh, recently, or even within the past year, or, you know, the past couple of years, depression and anxiety are very prevalent during the holiday season. So make it a point to reach out to them, even if it's just a, a text or a phone call and just say, hey, I'm thinking of you. How are you? You know? Also listening, just listening can help. You don't have to solve people's problems. A lot of times they just need to vent. And that just means just listen, don't try to solve it and don't try to, you know, take one side or the other. Just listen is, is making a, is, can be a big, a big support to them. Uh, be supportive of healthy habits. Again, I gave you a list of different things that you can be doing. Uh, encourage, please, please, please encourage professional help. I'm not just saying that because I want more clients. Trust me, I have clients that I have to turn down. I have potential clients I have to turn down because we're so mental health uh, professionals, counselors, psych, uh, I'm a psychotherapist. So we're booked right now. I mean, the holidays are really big for us, but encourage professional help. There's somebody out there who has availability that they can see. They need someone to talk to. They need someone that can listen to them and get uh, coping skills, 
cognitive behavior therapy. Uh, we have lots of different tools that we can help people with, especially people who've experienced trauma. So ask them to get professional help. Uh, connect with your loved ones or with social support. Uh, any t- Please, and this is really important, especially right now, take any mention of suicide seriously. It is as a person that's out there in society that is not a professional, it is not your job to determine if someone is suicidal, but take it seriously. If that means you have to get them to the 988 line or you have to get them to a psychiatric hospital for evaluation, please do that because you would hate to be the last person that knew that somebody was struggling with suicidal ideation or that they mentioned it. So please take it seriously. Uh, Encourage them to make time for self-care. Anybody struggling with depression, anxiety, self-care, you know, whatever they like to do, getting a massage, doing something, doing something fun, just taking care of yourself. And uh, lastly, you are not responsible for curing your loved ones. You are responsible to notice the signs. You're responsible to direct them to the right place uh, and just be supportive and listen. But you're not responsible for curing them. So take that burden off your shoulders. Wow. Thank you very much. And I hadn't really thought of it. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, so the issues with anxiety, the issues with impression could actually lead to suicide. And that's something suicidal that's ideation, very, yes. And that's something very, very real in this in this country. Right. It seems like a permanent solution to a, a temporary problem that people are going through. Um, exactly. So nine eight eight nine eight eight, and that's a hotline for people who are having these thoughts. Call or text. Yes, if you need to talk to somebody, you are on the verge of self harm or suicidal ideation or your depression may be leading you in that direction, just reach out. They're there. They're, they'll respond. It's a great tool right. for anyone. Well, Laura, thank you very much. This has been very helpful, very educational, I know, for me and hopefully a lot of the listeners. Um, my name is J.R. Gonzalez. I'm your host, and you can find out more about Laura if you go to our um, website. We have latinobusinessreport.com. We also, on the podcast notes, we will also go ahead and put that 988 number and Lauda, with your permission, I'd like to go ahead and, and give you your me email address if people want to reach out to you and, and maybe have, have, ask a question or two. But this Fair has enough. been this is this has been good. And the holidays are not over. We still have uh, New Year's around the corner. So, Lauda, if you can make it in your schedule, I'd love to get you back next week. And let's talk about New Year's and New Year's resolutions and why people do not keep them or how so they can keep great. them. I would love to talk about that. Yes, yes, I would love to talk about that. Because then I have to take my own advice too, so. (laughs) Once again, you've been listening to Latino Business Report. We're here with Laura Ramirez. And uh, if you want to, you can also find a complete library of Latino Business Report on YouTube under the same name. Folks, happy holidays. Be safe and be nice to those loved ones because they love you. 